tonight, Father. Our eyes are open on tonight, God. We thank you, God, and we just want to see your glory in this place, God. We came for your glory. Hallelujah. We came for your glory. Hallelujah. We came for your power. Hallelujah. We came for your authenticity, God. And we ask that you have your way, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we give you praise, God. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah. If God's been good to you on today, hallelujah. He saw fit to wake us up on this morning. Glory to God. He saw fit to give us another chance to praise his name. Hallelujah. He woke up our children. I don't know about you. Hallelujah. But I'm glad that he woke my children up. Hallelujah. I thank God. Hallelujah. That I'm still in my right mind, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the confusion. Hallelujah. In the midst of the misunderstandings, I still have my right mind. So I'm thankful on today. Hallelujah. That God is a good God. Glory to God. We give you honor and praise, God, in everything that you do. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and hallelujah glory to God hallelujah glory to God we thank God on today hallelujah I, I don't know about you but I've been going through some things on this week you know the body tries not to act right hallelujah the the mind tries to get out of order a little bit but God is a God of order he's a God that will set things in place so I'm thankful on today that he decided to set some things in place for us I'm just grateful if you're grateful I want to hear you give God the glory on today hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Lord hallelujah to your name God hallelujah we're gonna allow God to have his way on today hallelujah glory to God in Jesus name we pray amen you may be seated in his presence thank you so much VLCM I am so proud of you give yourselves a hand tonight it's wet out there but y'all are in the house tonight amen I am so proud of you. Just a few uh, observations and announcements. Um, the Men of Victory, the move, Pinstack Bowling Night is not Saturday, it's Friday, it's tomorrow. Hey, the men in the house, amen. Amen. So make sure that you're there and be ready to have a good old time. And y'all don't want me there because y'all wouldn't win, amen. I'm kidding. Y'all men have a good time. Can we thank God for our men, for every father, every husband, every man. Come on, VLCM. Come on, ladies. Amen. 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 Also, our Youth Easter rehearsal is every Saturday at 1030 a.m. Please bring your children. Um, don't forget our Good Friday Deliverance Service is next Friday. Amen. I don't know if we still have flyers, but if we do, please grab one and, and share it with somebody. Also, share the event. It's on Facebook, and share the flyer on social media as well. Um, our seven church anniversary banquet is approaching. It'll be here before you know, so make sure you buy your early bird tickets. Amen. Um, don't forget our Saturday prayer call. Don't forget to stay connected. There's a lot going on. And praise team, please meet briefly after Bible study tonight. Amen. Amen. Now, how many of you know that there are gifts in the house? There are some amazing gifts in the house. And on Thursday nights, we like to utilize our gifts, give them an opportunity to exercise their gifts and to grow in their spiritual gifts. Um, and we have a gift here tonight with us. Amen. Amen. Now, before I introduce our gift, can you go to the church Facebook page and just do the, the work of the evangelist and press the share button? Amen. Let's get some people on tonight. Uh, by the clapping of our hands, can we welcome our online audience, our virtual audience? We love you. Amen. Um, I'm excited to hear our gift on tonight, and I'm not going to give a long introduction or anything else. I just know that God sent her here for a good reason. I know she got a job to be here, but I believe God sent her to VLCM as well. Amen? Amen. To help us grow, but also to help her grow. Amen. So by the clapping of your hands, can you welcome, give a warm welcome to Sister Krishan Hollins. Let's give honor to our amazing pastor, the Dr. Bettina Button. Amen. And please help me honor my friend, Pastor Tamika. 
And let's also give honor to Pastor Candice. Amen. Now let's bless God in this place on tonight. Amen. That's what I like to hear. He is deserving of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And I know that it's a rainy Thursday night and it's not Sunday morning, but I could hear my friend, Pastor Tamika, if it was Sunday morning, <laughs> saying that Psalms 122 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord on tonight, then you ought to give him some praise praise. Amen. If you're glad that you've made it through this week thus far, then you ought to give him some praise. Amen. If you're glad that he woke you up this morning in your right mind, then you ought to give him some praise. Amen. If you're glad that you don't look like what you've been through, then you ought to give him some praise. Oh, I'm glad that I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> The Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Okay, let's get into this word because I don't have that much time. <laughs> so if you will, turn with me to Genesis chapter 12. Now, this is a very familiar text, and I don't have time to tell the whole story anyway. But nevertheless, what I do want you to pull from the passage are three things, trust, obedience, and the blessing. Again, trust, obedience, and the blessing. So let's read verses one through three. And it says, now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house, and unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Amen? Amen. In the text we see, please have your seats. <clears throat> In the text, we see that God gave Abram, Abram very specific instructions. He told Abram to leave your country, your family, and your father's house and go to a land that I will show you. Then he promises to bless him. And what this tells me is that our blessings are tied to our obedience. Amen. And in order to obey, we must trust God. Have you ever been in a situation where you had to trust God? <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, just like Abram, God told me to leave my home and my family and come to Austin. So I had to trust him then to be a protector, to watch over my family and to keep my children safe. Um, that's not the only time that I had to trust him. When I went through a divorce after being married for 21 years, I had to trust him to be a provider. As he helped me build my career and to get me to a financially stable place so I could not only take care of myself, but my two college students. Amen. I also had to trust him when my daughter got sick and she went into a deep depression and her mind began to slip away. I had to trust him then to be a healer. I had to trust him to be a mind regulator. Maybe you've never had to trust him like I've had to trust him. But when I think back over my life and all that he has brought me from, I can't help but give him praise when I think about all that he has done. Amen. If you ever had to trust him, like I've had to trust him, it doesn't take much to give him praise. Sometimes you don't understand why your neighbor is praising the way that they are praising, but you don't know what your neighbor has gone through. You look at how we look right now, but you don't know where he brought us from. You don't know what we had to go through to get to this place. And that's why we praise him the way that we praise him. Amen. Thank you, God. Let's get back to the text. My time is almost gone. <laughs> so going back to Abram, for Abram's obedience, God made him these promises. I'll make you a great nation and bless you. I'll make your name great and you will be a blessing. 
I'll bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. All the people of the earth will be blessed through you. But again, in order for Abram to obtain these blessings, he had to first obey. So he did. We know how the story goes. He did. There were some things that happened between then and the end. But we know that in the end, God did bestow those blessings upon Abram for his obedience. So now I want to quickly give you three steps on how you can begin to receive the blessings of God in your own life. Number one, <laughs> number one, make yourself available. Sometimes we're too busy with other things in life that we don't give God the space that he needs to be able to use us. So you have to first make yourself available. Number two, listen to his instructions. Pray for your spiritual ears to be open so that you can hear what it is that God is saying. Amen. And number three, do what it is that he's telling you to do. You have to obey. Now what I want us to do quickly is do some self-reflecting. Are there any promises that God has made in your life that you have not seen come to pass? Could it be that you have not obeyed him yet? I hear you saying that you trust God, but you're not doing what it is that he told you to do. Amen. Deuteronomy 28 tells us the blessings that we will receive when we obey. So do you believe him when he says you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the field? Do you believe him when he says that you will be blessed when you come and when you go? Do you believe him when he says that blessed is the work of your hands? Amen. Do you believe him when he says you shall be the lender and not the borrower? Do you believe him when he says you are the head and not the tail? Do you believe him when he says you are above all only and not beneath? If it is so and you do trust God, then prove it through your obedience and all of these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Amen. Y'all can do better than that. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Krishan, for that powerful message on tonight. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. That's how you come in and give a word and drop the mic. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Um, I am grateful for all the gifts of the house. So ministers always be ready. She found out yesterday she was going to be up here. Amen. Got to always be ready. Amen. Amen. I am going to sit down so that I don't preach. Amen. That I teach on tonight. Y'all pray that I teach on tonight. Amen. Amen. Now, before I get into today's lesson, I do have a prophetic word. I was in prayer this morning and I was praying for you guys and I was seeking God on behalf of VLCM. And this word kept sticking out and kept hitting my belly and hitting my spirit. And the Lord told me to tell you that although things may be difficult in this season, you still have favor. And um, not only do you have favor to get through, but you have favor to get to. And so I just need just about five people to believe God that you have his favor. That his favor is going before you, hallelujah, and his favor is on your life. The Bible says that we should find favor with God and favor with man. But when I have favor with God, it doesn't matter about man. God can open doors that no man can shut. Hallelujah. And so I believe tonight that we are walking into a season of favor. Somebody shout favor. favor. Amen. Let's get to the word of the Lord. Um, I also want to thank Minister Catherine James and Prophetess uh, uh, Candace Poindexter who gave the word on the last time we met for Bible study. Amen. 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 Mr. Catherine taught, I'm built for this. And I... I loved uh, her demonstration on the Holy Spirit. I'm going to borrow that. Amen. That was really good. And Prophetess Candace gave a, gave a powerful word on offense. Amen. Amen. And that's where we are on tonight. Y'all know where we are. Luke chapter 17, Jesus tells his disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe through him whom they do come. Amen. And we've been also in Genesis chapter 4. Can you go there really quickly? Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. I'm going to jump down to verse 6. Genesis chapter 4, verse 6. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? 
And why has your countenance fallen? Now, you know, Cain and Abel, they both brought offerings to the Lord. Uh, Cain brought an offering of, um, um, of fruit of the ground, but Abel brought the firstborn flock offering of his flock. Amen. And so when he brought, they brought their offerings, God respected Abel's offering, but did not respect Cain's offering. And it made Cain upset. And so God is asking him, why are you angry? And why is it, why is it on your face? Why is it on your shoulder? Number seven, verse seven, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And his desire is for you, but you shall rule over it. Then verse 8, now Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field, they were having a conversation, they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Verse 9, then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And God said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. And when you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strip to you, meaning it's going to be hard to succeed. Then it says, and a fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. And so that's where we are. We've been talking about spiritual vagabonds. I will give my title later, uh, but let me just pray really quickly. Father, we thank you for your word on tonight. Thank you for Minister Krishan and allow, uh, using her to uh, give your word on tonight in the name of Jesus. Now, God, use me as your teacher, Lord God. Help me to release what you would have me to release. Say what you would have me to say, Lord God. We thank you, oh God, that you are the great teacher, and I submit myself as your vessel to teach through me, God. And we're in expectation for your presence to be here tonight. We thank you that even at Bible study somebody can get saved even at bible study study somebody can get delivered even in bible study somebody can be healed so use tonight's word to heal us oh god and to regulate us god and to correct us and to grow us and stretch us in jesus name we pray amen Amen. So we've been discussing spiritual vagabonds um, and who they are, what they are, and how they become one, how you become a spiritual vagabond. And as you can see in Genesis chapter 4, Cain became a spiritual vagabond because he was offended. Amen. Uh, Jesus, I mean, sorry, the Lord says that you are a vagabond. You'll be a fugitive and a vagabond because he was offended, which caused him to sin. And I need to let you know that nine times out of ten, when you are offended, you're going to walk in sin. Okay, and Cain's offense turned into double sin. <laughs> so the first sin was to be angry with God. The second sin was to take it out on Abel. Yeah. And so sometimes when we are upset with God, we'll take it out on our brother or sister. Yeah. Okay, that's too much. And so a spiritual vagabond is someone who wanders from place to place without any settled home, a spiritual nomadic, uh, someone who does not uh, have a permanent place, a permanent church, uh, where they wander from place to place unsettled, okay? And a spiritual vagabond is someone who refuses to let God lead. Uh, they let their offenses lead. They let their emotions lead. They let their uh, uh, feelings lead. And I am declaring that they, we will have no more spiritual vagabonds. Yeah. Amen. So last time I talked, we talked about uh, signs of a spiritual vagabond. And then we talked about how we stop ourselves from being a spiritual vagabond. I'm just doing a quick review so we catch up. Number one, this is one way to, that you stop yourself from being a spiritual vagabond is number one, you recognize when offense is in you, not just in everybody else. Because we are really good about pointing fingers. We can really, we're really good about telling uh, when somebody else is upset and when somebody else is offended, when somebody else is angry, but we don't take time to realize, oh, I'm offended too. That was number one. Number two, Two, um, another way that we stop ourselves from being a spiritual vagabond is we work more on our character than our call. Amen. Number three, we remain grateful. And I am um, noticing that we are living in a time where we are entitled, uh, where we entitled to every blessing that God gives us, that we are entitled to a position. We're entitled to that job. We're entitled to this blessing. We're entitled to this and to that. We're entitled to the money we have, but we're not entitled to it. It belongs to God. And sometimes we forget that, so we become uh, less grateful. We become um, very pessimistic. We, come, we become cynicists and, and people who are not walking in gratitude. But, and when you 
have a sense of gratitude, watch this, you become grateful not for just what you have, but who you have. And when you have a sense of gratitude, you're grateful who you have or who has you. And I am believing that we are walking in a season where we must remember we are grateful who has me. Hallelujah. I thank God for all of the tangible things I have, but I thank him for the intangible that he has me. He has my back. He has my house. He has my family. He has my children. He has my bank account. He has my career. He has my business. He has me. He has my mind. He has my emotions. I'm talking to you. I'm believing there's about seven people in here who can testify God has me because on a good day, I'm still crazy. On a good day, my righteousness is as filthy rags, but st he still has me. Aren't you grateful that God has you? Hallelujah. He has his hand on your life. He has his hand on your destiny. He has your hand, his hand on your future, so nobody else's hand can touch you. I am so grateful that God has me. So that's, that's one reason to be grateful. Uh, Paul tells us to be grateful no matter our circumstance. Now, I need to remind us that life is not fair, but God is still good. Okay, y'all missed it. Life is not fair, but God is still faithful. Okay, that wasn't good enough. Life is not fair, but God is a provider. Okay, that wasn't good. Life is not fair, but God is the healer. Life is not fair, but God is still God. I'm so grateful, hallelujah, that even when things are unfair, he's God and he's working all things together for my good. Can I get just two testimonies that can testify? It didn't feel good, but it's working for my good. Things aren't looking good, but somehow it's going to work out for my good good. Can't we just clap our hands because God is good and he's working things out for the good. That means that that loss is working for your good. That grief is working for your good. Lack is working for your good. The people that walked away, it's all working for your good. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we ought to remain in a place of gratitude. And one of the ways that we can remain in a place of gratitude is have a good memory. Somebody say, I need to have a better memory. Now, some of us can just look back to last year. Because I don't know about you, but 2023 tried to take me out of here. But I've made it um, through most of March in 2024. Okay. And now, can we just, just think about just yesterday? Because when I start thinking, I can't help but to start thinking. When I think about all the things the enemy has thrown my way, but God became my shield and my buckler. Who am I talking to tonight uh, that has a sense of gratitude, that, that can look back on yesterday, that can look back on last week, that can look back, hallelujah, on this morning and say thank you. Just in case you forgot, every time, hallelujah, we get up in the morning, we have brand new mercies. That's mercy that we didn't work for. That's mercy that we didn't pray for. Y'all not with me. That's mercy we didn't tithe for. That's mercy we didn't sow for. That's mercy that God just decided to give just because he's good. And I am grateful that we have mercy. I, I guess y'all can't really understand, but if you are a sinner saved by grace, you can say thank you for the Lord's mercy. I thought some things that were evil, but he gave me new mercy. I've done some things that didn't look like I was a believer, but he gave me new mercy. I said some things I shouldn't have said, but but he gave me some new mercies. And so Paul teaches us in Philippians to be grateful. He says, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. I know how to live low <laughs> and I know how to live in prosperity. And so this is just a side note. I believe it's important for us to live humbly even when we are prosperous. Uh -huh, because money can come today and be gone tomorrow. So one of the ways not to be a spiritual vagabond is to have a sense of gratitude, okay? Another way, this is new, is to stop looking for a way out and start looking for a way through. Yeah. Baby, we are some of the most quitness, leavingest, resigningest, walking awayest people on the planet. We won't leave our job, but when we are offended, no, we'll keep working there. Yeah, we'll stay right there. Managers racist, y'all quiet. Coworkers prejudice, 
You know good and well they're not paying you what you do, but you are still working there. But let somebody offend your big toe at the church and you're ready to walk. Mm -hmm. the, 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 I'm not talking about transition. God is a moving God. If he tells you to move, make the move. Amen. But I'm, I'm talking about when we quit, when we move out of position without talking to God. Or we blame God on our offense. Oh, it's quiet up in here. Y'all should have went with uh, Minister Krishan. Y'all should have shouted with her. Okay. Now, listen, I'm going to say something that might offend you. A prophet may come in here and, and tell you it's time for you to go. It's time for you to leave. It's time for you to transition. I've seen people receive that word and shout. But the pastor who prays for you will say, stay planted, and you'll stop coming to church. It's quiet up in here. We, 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 won't, we won't resign from that job. We, we, we won't, you know, quit friendships, but we'll quit church quicker than, okay, all right. <laughs> and so when we do this, when we leave prematurely, we do what Cain did. Okay. When we leave prematurely, we become or we are in danger of becoming what Cain was, a vagabond where we are wandering, never planted, never still, never secure, just leaving places and leaving people because we are upset. But that's not what God intended. Can we go to James chapter 1? <laughs> James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Y'all there? Go down to verse 2. My brethren, my brothers and sisters. That's what brethren means. That doesn't, brethren does not mean just men. It means, you know, ladies as well. So you don't feel out. James is talking to all of us. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work. That yet ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And so when we leave places prematurely, we're not letting patience work. We're letting pain work. We're letting our offenses work. We're letting our immaturity work. It's quiet. Let me look at the word patience. If you're taking notes, it's a good time to take some notes. Patience in the uh, Webster's Dictionary is the ability or willingness to suppress restlessness. It's the ability and willingness to suppress annoyance when confronted with delay. <laughs> That's definition number one. Definition number two is a good time to write your notes. Uh, to be patient means that you are willing and able to bear provocation when people provoke you. To bear annoyance, to bear misfortune, to bear delay, watch this, to bear hardship as a good soldier. To bear pain with fortitude, resilience, and calm without complaining. Okay, so. Because what we do is we'll bear the provocation, but we will show enough tell somebody about it. <laughs> Patience in the Greek, because that's what James chapter 1 was originally written in, is this word hupomone. Hupomone. It means to endure. It means to be steadfast. It means to persevere. Watch this. And it means to remain behind. And that's where the rubber hits the road. Where, because when we are impatient, we're not willing to remain behind. When we think somebody else is getting ahead of us, we're, we're not willing to remain behind. And so we become impatient. We try to skip steps. It's quiet. Y'all quiet. Another word for uh, patience in the Greek is the word long or words, long suffering. We don't like to suffer. And we sure don't like to suffer long. We, we like Thai tribute. Only one night, though. We like, you know, we only, you, we got one night, God, to, for us to suffer. It's quiet. <laughs> the Greek word for patience, 
hupomone are two words. The first word is hypo, H-Y-P-O. Hypo means under. The second part, mone, or it comes from the word mino, which means to remain. So patience means to remain under endurance. Okay, it's quiet. We, we, we don't want to remain under nothing. We want to reign on top, don't we? But in order to reign on top, we got to remain un under. Let me say like, if I suffer with him, <laughs> I can reign with him. But we want to reign with him without the suffering. And so, the, so verse 4, James 1 says, let patience have her perfect work. Why do we want to let patience have her perfect work? It's in that same verse. So that we may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. The word perfect there means mature. Entire means whole. No missing pieces. And wanting nothing literally means what that says. I, am, I mean, that means I have all that I need and then some. So in order to have all that I need and then some, I got to be patient. Oh, okay. So that text there, verse 4, is saying that we endure so that we can get fully developed, so that we can be mature, watch this, and so that we don't have any deficiencies. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of managers being deficient. I don't know about you, but I am a little sick and tired of pastors being deficient. Y'all quiet. How many of you are tired of apostles having the title with no efficiency? but nothing but deficiency. Title, no task. Title, no love. What did Paul say? If I can speak with the men of angel and the language of angels and God and I have not love, I have nothing. Okay, how many of you know some mean prophets? Impatient preachers. It's quiet. Y'all don't, don't like this. So, so, when we quit, when we leave, when we walk away prematurely, we're not allowing patience to do any work. And so we keep leaving. Keep jumping. And I'm not just talking about church. I'm talking about relationships. Got a new bestie every year. Got a new boo every month. I was telling one of my friends, um, I was talking about um, sharing something with someone and um, <laughs> And I found that someone I knew that I thought was cool, I, I didn't know that they had gotten divorced until they got remarried. And watch this, because sometimes we move too fast. It was, it was, y'all, it was, y'all don't understand. It was, it was just married 2023. March the 15th, we married again. So that means, and I'm not talking about being remarried, that's fine. Get you a boo, huh? God bless you. It's better to marry than to burn. Hallelujah. That's what Paul said. I don't necessarily agree with it. But what I am trying to say, is there's nothing wrong with being remarried. I, we can argue the text. What I am saying is there is something wrong with being remarried before you heal. Because you're carrying the hurt from the last relationship, the last marriage, into something new. And if you're not careful, the new will look like the old. But that doesn't just happen in marriages and relationships. That happens in churches. You join a new church and you're still holding on to the pain of the last one. It's quiet up in here. Preaching hurting, pastoring hurting, singing hurting, leading hurting. When all you have to do is sit in the purple chairs for a little while. <laughs> Can I tell you something? When you get offended, God is not trying to hurt you. He's trying to grow you. Okay, yeah. No. He's trying to expand you. He's trying to increase your capacity for pain. Because if you want elevation, sometimes you're going to have to have the capacity for the pain of that level. Okay, here's a problem. A lot of people have become spiritual vagabonds um, because they have not let patience have her perfect work and because they are offended. But here's another problem. Are you ready? A lot of people have become vagabonds because of how they view the church. The writer of the Bait of Satan, his name is Mr. John Bevere. He said in chapter 5, I believe, churches are not cafeterias. But you can go eat what you want. <laughs> I want to add something. They should also not be covens. Okay, 
That's, that's another teaching for another day. A cafeteria is a place where you can pick and choose what you like and what you want to eat and where you want to sit and where you want to remain. And if we're not careful, our churches will become the high school cafeteria. Y'all know the high school cafeteria. Football team over there, cheerleaders over there, popular people at that table, geeks are over at this table. Y'all with me? Okay, I went to uh, LBJ. The, the ghetto folks, they had like three tables. <laughs> they was all together. <laughs> it's okay, y'all can laugh. Amen. So I would transition from the ghetto table to the geek table because I was friends with everybody. Amen. And the geek tech people had the money and I wanted my lunch paper. That's name. But churches, you know what? Let me let me read something to you. Y'all know it's okay to laugh in church, right? Let me read something to you. This is what John Bevere say, said. You ready? Today, men and women leave churches so readily if they see something wrong in the leadership. Perhaps it is the way the pastor takes offering. Maybe it is the way the money is spent. If they don't like what the pastor preaches, they leave. He or she is either not approachable, that's the one, or too familiar. And this list doesn't end. Rather than face the difficulties and maintain hope, they run to where there appears to be no conflict. Let's face it. Jesus is the only perfect pastor. Somebody say amen. amen. But he still had a Judas. But he still had a Thomas. Okay, anyway. So why do we run from difficulties in America instead of facing them and working through them? When we don't hit these conflicts head on, we usually leave offended. Sometimes we say our prophetic ministry just was not received. <laughs> we then go from church to church looking for a place with flawless leadership. At the initial of writing this book, I had been a member of only two churches. That's a good man, y'all. In two different states in the past 14 years, I have made more than two, in fact, numerous opportunities to become offended with the leadership over me, most of which, I might add, stem from my own fault or immaturity. I had the chance to become critical and judgmental with leadership, but leaving was not the answer. In the midst of a very trying circumstance, one day the Lord spoke to me through Scripture that said this, this is the way I want you to leave a church, Isaiah 55 and 12. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. But most people do not leave churches that way. And so let me give you some examples of what a church are or how we look at the church. Some people look at churches like cafeterias, yes. But churches are also homes. My house should be a house of prayer, house, home. So that means if a church is a home, then we are family. And nobody can get on your nerves like family. They know you. They know how to push the buttons. Okay? All right? Now, some people look at the church as a hospital. I don't, I don't subscribe to that. that. To me, it's yucky. I believe the church is a place of healing. But if it's a hospital, that means that you're always supposed to leave. You're not supposed to stay at the hospital forever, huh? I do believe the church should have a hospital wing. It's quiet up in here. And at some point, I go from the hospital wing, then I go to the school so I can become the doctor to help in the hospital wing. But if we look at the church as a hospital, we're going to always be sick. Expecting the church to do something for us. And all we are doing is being patients. Are y'all all, all right here? Okay, I believe the church is uh, also a home, um, but also a training camp, okay, where you get uh, intense learning like we are on some Thursday nights, amen, but I need to let you know that some things are taught and some things are caught, okay, y'all missed it, I also believe the church, watch this, is an army, it's in the Bible, endure hardship as a good soldier we sing I am on the battlefield for the Lord y'all know that song am I the only Baptist here? am I only reformed baptism and I promise him that I I will serve him till I die I am on the battlefield for my 
We sang that. I mean, we sang that. But we didn't really listen. Because if I'm on a battlefield, I'm in a battle. And I'm a soldier and I can't go AWOL. I know that we are in a, in a, uh, the church is also an army because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we do wrestle. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, there, I believe that in a church we have different troop members. I believe we got some corporals. I believe we got some privates. Some me in the military, y'all can help me. I believe we got some private first class. We believe we got some sergeants and some majors and some master sergeants. Hallelujah. I believe we got some lieutenants and some captains. I believe we got some colonels and some generals and some quartermaster generals. But I believe, watch this, we ought to have some warriors. But what happens in a lot of churches, we don't become warriors, we become warriors. And not only that we worry, but we worry other people. Okay, it's quiet. I also think the church is a growth center where, oh, it's quiet right here, where we are challenged to grow. And when we don't accept the challenge, we get stuck and have arrested development. How many of you know somebody who is 62 years old still acting like they are two? Because they did not allow the growth center, they did not allow patience to have her perfect work. Somebody say, stay planted. stay planted, even when it's difficult. Can I tell you why? Because the Bible tells us that the planted flourish. Oh, y'all don't like me. Psalm number 92, verse 13. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. We'll flourish in the courts of our God, but we got to first, what? Stay planted. Okay, so we want to get to the flourish part. We want to get to increase. We want to get to expansion. We want to get to prosperity. We want to get to multiplication. We want to succeed. Anybody here want to succeed? But according to that text, if we want to succeed, we got to stay planted. Even when it's difficult. All right. So, but if you are going to leave a church, can I tell you how to do it? Leave right. Let me give you some signs of when to leave your church. This is when I need you. Some signs. Of when to leave your church three categories number one uh, for the next 20 minutes I'm gonna give you signs of when to leave the church are y'all ready number one you have a gospel reason uh, yeah this is yeah this is green light but yeah, don't know you don't worry about the color yeah don't worry about that so a gospel reason so if your church does not teach the Bible leave those of you watching online and then watch this replay, if your church is not teaching the Bible, leave. Matter of fact, you should run. Okay? But here's a specific part of the gospel that I want to encourage you to pay attention to. Sinners are saved by grace through faith. Right? We know that. Not minus anything or plus anything. We are not saved by works. Nothing saves us but the grace of God through Christ Jesus and we believe in it. Are you with me on tonight? Because if we think it's our work that keeps us saved, we will start boasting about it. We will start comparing us to somebody else. Oh, I sin better than them, so I'm going to get a better seat. Okay. Now, because we are saved, we should work. We should serve. We should live right. Somebody say hallelujah. We should love right. But we have to be careful. One of the reasons to leave a church is that they're preaching another gospel. In Galatians chapter 1, Paul talks about a person who teaches another gospel is accursed, and you don't want to be in a place that is cursed. Are you with me? I'm not talking about doctrinal differences. I'm talking about the gospel, where they say things that are absolutely in, in, in opposite to the Bible. Okay? And so if any church embraces a false gospel, run for your life. Okay? Now, here's another reason, and this is a doctrinal reason. Okay, if, no, let me say it like this. A doctrinal reason, let me, they, you believe in the prophetic, but they don't. You believe in the fivefold, but they don't. You believe in spiritual gifts, but they don't. You believe in the laying out of hands, but they don't. 
That is a doctrinal reason to leave the church. But here's a caveat. Sometimes God will send you to a place or allow you to remain a place so that you feel that void in that place. Or you become the catalyst, hallelujah, to be that spiritual voice in that place to release the fivefold, to release the prophetic. Amen. Amen. One plants, one waters, one, but God gives the increase. I know some people in my old Baptist church who were prophets on the intercessory team, and they are still there because God planted them there. Are you with me? But then there are times where you know that you need to learn and you need to grow and you need to be stressed. So that means that you need to go to a place that teaches on prophecy if you are a prophet. Are you with me tonight? Number three, here's another one. A personal reason. Now, there's a whole lot of personal reasons people leave a church. But the healthiest reason to leave a church for a personal reason is relocation. <laughs> Just put relocation. Those are the three um, reasons to leave the church. Are you with me? Let me give you Bible because y'all looking at me strange. Romans chapter 16 verses 1 through 2. Uh, Paul talks about a deacon by the name of Phoebe. And because she was leaving her church, she was transitioning somewhere else and he was telling the church of Rome to receive her. So if and when you leave a church, there ought to be someone that can write a letter on your behalf saying receive her. It's quiet up in here. And so the next few, um, and you can sit down. The next few I want to talk about are going to fall in these categories. And I want you to help me pick them. Are y'all ready? Here's another sign to leave your church. These are like yellow lights. These are like blinking yellow lights. Some of these are red lights. Abuse. Spiritual abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, verbal abu abuse. That is a good reason to leave a church. Are you with me? God does not want us to be abused. Are you with me? And so if abuse, what, what, where on there would that fall? Would it be gospel? Thank you. Um, I also believe it will fall in doctrinal as well. Okay. Now, let me give you a caveat because, you know, the church is the messy place. And I don't mean messy like gossipy. I mean messy, like, because we are a mess. Y'all looking at me strange. Y'all look like y'all ain't got no mess. Y'all look like y'all ain't got no trouble. Y'all look like y'all got all your T's crossed and your I's dotted. <laughs> None of us are immune to mess. None of us are immune to mistakes. But when we think that leadership, watch this, has to be perfect, the God Almighty, then we become the abuser. Now, I'm not talking about when leadership is consumed with power and their pursuit of power and their pursuit of having a big church or a big name. I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when a leader um, is doing the best they can, but they make mistakes. And a lot of times we treat them like they are abusers. When all they are, are is a person making a mistake. Are y'all with me tonight? Now, if a leader is making demands and twisting the gospel, run for your life. Amen. If they are speaking word curses over you, run for your life. And one of, the, one of the biggest word curses I see in the body of Christ is when somebody wants to leave the church, the person, the, la the pastor will say, um, you will only succeed if you stay in this church. Or if you leave this church, you, gon you, know, you ain't going to make it. The devil is a liar. God is going to bless them wherever they are, and God is going to bless you where you are. Hallelujah. Even, the, even if there's a hint of that, run, run. Number two, y'all ready for this? You don't agree with the vision. Where would that fall? Doctrinal, okay? Now, the mission of every church is the same, okay? The Great Commission is the same. But how each church um, does it or how each church will walk that mission is going to be different. Every church is going to look and feel different. Every church plays a different role in the overarching mission of the church, and that's okay. The problem is, is when we are trying to make a church fit our preferences and not the vision. Oh, it's quiet up here. God is multidimensional, so he's going to have multi-churches, okay? And so, amen. And so a lot of times we get upset with the church because of our preference, not because of its gospel. Are y'all are y'all all right? Take a deep breath. Y'all looking at me strange. All right. 
So if a church is stuck in tradition, but they're preaching the gospel. If the church is always trying to do new things and it's annoying, but they're preaching the gospel. Okay. Y'all get what I'm saying? And so a lot of times when we join churches, we join churches off emotion. And we ain't even looked at the vision. Now, I think our vision is pretty self-explanatory. It is right there. <laughs> I mean, we get the victory. Amen? But it's important that if you decide to leave VLC and you're looking for another church, look at the vision. Look at their doctrinal beliefs. Go to their website to find out what they really believe. Are they prophetic? Are they apostolic? Do they believe on the lane? Do they believe in the Holy Ghost? Are they a cessationist? Meaning that they don't believe in any moves of the Spirit. They stopped in Acts. But they have a good choir. Okay, y'all quiet. That's all right. Let me give you another one. So number two is you don't agree with the vision. Number three, you don't agree with the visionary. Where would that be? Where would that fall? That's personal. Can you write personal on there? Thank you. That's personal. Now, Controlling, that's different. If they just look at you like a warm body to fill a seat. But then if you disagree with the leader who is walking in the gospel, who is walking in good doctrinal beliefs, you become what I would, uh, would call a Aaron and Miriam spirit in numbers. Oh, Lord. Lord, you told me to teach this. And they looking at me strange, God. I could have taught on anything else but this, God. Faith. So when you get a chance, read the, the story in Numbers when Aaron and Miriam were conspiring against Moses. And what's really funny is I believe that Aaron was a better speaker than Moses. Miriam was possibly a better prophet than Moses in regards to prophecy, not leadership. But it was Moses who had the staff. Right. <laughs> Y'all quiet up in here. And so if you don't agree with the visionary, you need to find a new staff. Oh. Can I let you know that most, not all, but most visionaries, most senior leaders don't want to be? <laughs> they don't want to be. They, are, they run for years. And so anyone who comes and disagree, they are willing to give you the staff. Hallelujah. <laughs> who wants it? Glory. And so, but when you disagree with the visionary, it might be time for you to look for a new church home. All right, here's uh, num number four. You're not being fed. Where, would, where do you think that would fall? I'm getting there. You're not being fed. What do you think? It's personal, doctrinal, gospel. You're not being fed. You think it's gospel? They preach in Jesus, but you're not being fed. It's personal. It's personal. It's personal. Absolutely. Now, they preach in the same dry sermons, you know, unstudied teachings. There's no growth. I get it. But here's the caveat. There's only so mo much growth we can receive being passive church consumers. Okay? So that means if we want to eat well, we need to show up to the table. Not only should we, thank you, not only should we show up to the table, watch this, but our appetite diminishes if we don't help serve it. Where we become just consumers. What is, who's that that says you can have it your way? Is that Burger King? And at McDonald's, you can supersize it. The church is not McDonald's or Burger King. The church is a representative of God. The church is the bride of Christ, not our own personal, watch this, our own personal thing that we can just dangle up in front of somebody's say, uh, uh, face and say, you ought to be glad that I'm here. But that's how we treat the church. Expecting to grow spiritually, watch this, by attending but not participating Expecting is, is like expecting to get physically healthy by eating better but not getting on a treadmill. <laughs> Somebody say you got to do both, sugar. You got to do both. <laughs> According to Oprah, you got to do more than that, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> All right. 
in both 1 Corinthians 3 and Hebrews 5, the, the writers of those, those letters, those books, talk about spiritual milk, right? Talks about having milk versus solid food. And um, they saw, uh, Paul talks about, I can't give you solid food because you're still on milk, okay? And one version talks about solid food being meat. But what makes something milk? It's because it's been through a cow. Meaning that when you have milk, it's been processed through a cow. It's been processed through something else. But when you have meat, hallelujah, the cow has died. And you go straight to the meat. So as you mature, you don't have to be milk fed. You can sit at the table and eat your own steak. And a lot of times when we don't have our own personal study, ooh, we want to be milk fed. It's quiet. They don't like this, God. <laughs> so as a mature believer, it's not just about being fed. It's about being discipled. All right. They don't like this, God. It's all right. The church, watch this, is not a marketplace where we can pick the spiritual products that we like. It's a community that we worship Jesus with the people that we like and dislike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all don't like that one, so let me move on. Number five. This one should be easy for us. You don't trust the church with your money. <laughs> Which one is that? Personal. <laughs> if you cannot, uh -huh, that's a point. If you cannot trust the church with your money, you shouldn't give them your time. Oh, Lord. Now, some churches keep their books closed, and they won't share where the money goes. Somebody say that's a red flag. Red flag. But as a disciple, as a member of a church, you should know where your money is going. We share that every January. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Now, some areas you may not know all the details. We, let me tell you why. I'm being very transparent tonight. I don't think it's fair to share the salaries of the people that are being salaried at the church because it could cause division. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So, so sharing public salaries could cause strife and division in a church. And so salaries go into one bucket. If we share the honorariums, then, okay, anyway. No, no, ooh, I was about to go down a rabbit hole. Let me, let me read what's in my notes. Giving to a church is like making an investment. And when you refuse to invest in a place that's investing in you, it's spiritual robbery. So make sure you are part of a church family that you can trust with your investment as they trust you with theirs. Are y'all with me on tonight? All right. Number six. The church isn't doing anything for people outside the church. Which one is that? Gospel and doctrinal. Gospel and doctrinal. All right. There should be a balance between uh, spiritual growth internally and spiritual growth externally. We are the church within the walls and the church without the walls. Amen. But here's the problem. When we go outside the walls, who's going to help us go? Because sometimes what we complain about is what we were sent to do. The church doesn't have outreach. Start it. What you need? We got food pants right over there. Just grab some stuff. Let's go. Are you with me? The church doesn't do this. Do it. You, you the church, right? Get a team. Let's go. Somebody um, gave me an idea not too long ago. Pastor, we should do this. Do it. You have my 100% support. <laughs> Somebody say do it. Because what happens is we wait for the pastor to do it when God gave us the idea. Number seven, y'all give me three minutes. Y'all ready? We're only going to do ten. Number seven, politics have overtaken the pursuit of Jesus. Which one? Gospel. Gospel. It happens. And if your church is all about church politics and pol political drama, I would encourage you to run. Number eight, you haven't found community. Okay, which one is that? Huh? Which one? <laughs> Personal. The question is, if you haven't found, found community, have you tried? Have you tried? Have you, have you tried to, to be a part of a small group? What we call a small group here would be MOVE or WOW or the youth ministry. Amen? One of the biggest reasons that the church is important for Christians is that we have people to do life together with. 
And if you aren't finding that place, the question is, have you tried? Have you attended the community event? We were, I, now, I should have warned y'all, we weren't going to shout tonight. Tonight is practical. Have you joined a ministry? Have you, have you gone to Synergy? You married and have you gone to Synergy? Have you gone to the Millennials Meetup? Oh, it's quiet. Somebody say community, community. is a two-way street. Two street. It takes effort on both parts, and you have to do your part. Because we, we got the community, but do we have the communion? All right. number, number nine, number nine. Y'all quiet. Y'all like this. It's okay. Number nine, here's another. This is, this is a decent, okay reason. There's no place for you to use your spiritual gifts. Which one is that? And some of it should be doctrinal. It could be doctrinal too. Okay? According to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that we all have spiritual gifts and we're all uh, gifted so that we can help one another. The scripture basically says the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. And there are di diversities of gifts but the same Holy Ghost. The problem is, is when the leadership is, <coughs> is hoarding the gifts. Have you ever been to church where the leadership is hoarding the, the gifts? Hoarding the task, hoarding the work. Are, are y'all with me on tonight? <laughs> and so if a place is not allowing you to use your spiritual gift, the question, the first question is, have you communicated it? Because what I've, I noticed here at VLC, and because we're prophetic and because I'm prophetic, people think I'm a psychic. They expect, my pastor going to tell me what my spiritual gift No, baby. No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. That's, I'm not a psychic. Glory to God. Aren't y'all glad I'm not a psychic? Hallelujah. If I, baby, if I could point out all spiritual gifts, woohoo, wouldn't have to work. All right. There should be a place for you to use your gift, but sometimes the place not necessarily to use your gift, but to use your skill. There's a difference between gift and skill, and we don't want to be gift heavy and not skill heavy. We don't want to be the Corinthian church where they could prophesy and speak in tongues and preach well and sing well, but not love well. Love is a skill set. Not being easily offended is a skill set. And so we need to be more concerned about our skill sets and not just our gifts. Oh, y'all quiet up in here. Number 10, I'm going to give you the last one. We're done for tonight. I told you we ain't going to shout. The last one for tonight. You. Sometimes the problem is you. <laughs> That's perfect. Sometimes you're not teachable. Sometimes you're not reachable. Sometimes you're not humble. I'm not pointing anybody out. This is what the Lord gave me. Sometimes you're just not. you just... And before you change churches, ask yourself if what really needs changing is you. The gospel of Jesus Christ is about change. Changing your life, not you changing him. We are to change from darkness to light, from death to life, from sin to salvation. And sometimes we are stubborn to change. And so, before you leave a church, you might want to consider it may not be your time to change churches. It may be time for Jesus to let your church change you. And that's all I have on tonight. Amen. Amen. Glory. Now, next week, nope, not next week, because that's before um, Good Friday. Amen. We're going to have a good time before Good Friday. Glory to God. But the following week, when we come back, I'm going to give you some red lights of when it's wrong to leave your church. Okay, that's going to be, a, you know, you got to come prayed up. Amen? And I'm also going to give you the steps of how to leave the church right. And then we're going to transition to chapter 6. Are y'all ready for that? Yes. Do you understand why we are reading this book? Yes. I don't want VLCM to limp because of offense. VLCM is called to soar. VLCM is called to succeed. VLCM is called to prosper. VLCM is called to win disciples. VLCM is called to equip believers. VLCM is called to do amazing things in the Austin area. But we can't do it if we keep taking the bait. And if we're not honest, we'll be the bait. God bless you on tonight. If you were blessed in any way, I encourage you to sow on this word. 
Um, I'm asking all those who can to sow a $24 seed. And if you can't sow $24, amen, get as close as you can. Now, if you want to sow $24 million, please, please make that decision on tonight. We will, we will pray with you. We will pray over everything you have. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm believing that somebody is going to write a $24 million check one day. You ought to have been shouting right there. That means that you're going to have more than $24 million. Yeah. Glory. Yeah. Amen. So next week, I'm asking all those who can and will to join me for Thursday night. Um, we're going to pray, but I'm also going to release the prophets. So prophets in the house, be ready. Amen. It's going to be a precursor to Good Friday. Good Friday is the night of deliverance. They'll be preaching, and then we'll walk in deliverance. But Thursday is the setup for that. Amen. And so Thursday night, please come. I would like everybody that's here tonight to be there Thursday night and Friday so that we can seek the Lord. And I'm believing that God is going to release the word of the Lord on next Thursday night. Amen. 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 Everybody's standing. Were you blessed on tonight? Yes. Amen. I am looking forward to what God is going to do on Sunday. It is Palm Sunday. Yes. Sunday is Palm Sunday. And I'm believing that the word that God has given me is going to take us right on into Easter celebration. I wish I could give you the title. I'm excited about it. Mm -mm. <laughs> Amen. I'm excited about what God is going to do Sunday, Thursday, Friday, and the following Sunday. Uh, Resurrection weekend and Easter season is one of the most important seasons of the body of Christ. And I don't want us to take it lightly. So I'm asking you to invite somebody to church. Invite someone, especially if they're looking for a church home, if they've been backslidden, if they, they've been offended by church, you ought to tell them that VLCM is a safe place. And VLCM is a place where they can heal, where they can grow, and where they can go forward. And I want you to invite as many people as possible. I would like Easter to be standing room only. I would like people to be on top of the organ. I would like some souls to get saved. Can we ask God for 20 souls on Easter morning? At the minimum. If you pray for it, I believe that he will do that and then some. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We're in expectation for this word to sit in us, sit on us, heal us, cleanse us, purify us, grow us, expand us, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you that we are no longer taking the bait of Satan. Thank you, O oh God, that we are not easily offended. Thank you, O oh God, that we are not offensive, but we walk in holiness. We walk in love. We walk in peace, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that we are peaceable. Hallelujah. We thank you that VLCM will no longer limp with the spirit of offense. We thank you that we are unified. We thank you that there is no discord. We thank you that there was not, there's nothing but love here and peace and power here. We thank you, oh God, that you're using us to get the victory. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, bless every sower, every giver, and every person that wanted to give but couldn't, God. We thank you, oh God, for every person in the house and watching online. We thank that you held back the storm. We thank that you held back the tornadoes. We thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that you have us protected and covered. And we are in expectation for Sunday morning to blow our mind. Now, keep us from now until then, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Sunday morning. If you would like to join or give your life to Christ, I'll stand up here for about 30 seconds. Amen. You're more than welcome to come. Amen. Praise team, don't forget um, to come for rehearsal and a quick meeting really quickly. Amen. God bless you.